Here in room O, we will explore and learn about Joseph Paxton on our architect gallery tour. Joseph was born in 1803 and died in 1865. In 1832, Paxton developed an interest in greenhouses at Chatworth, where he designed a series of buildings with forcing frames for espalier trees and for the cultivation of exotic plants, such as a highly prized pineapple. At the time, the use of glass houses was in its infancy, and those at Chatsworth were dilapidated. After an experimentation, he designed a glass house with ridges and furrow roof that would be a right angles to the morning and evening sun an ingenuous frame design that would admit maximum light, the forerunner of modern greenhouses. The next great building at Chatsworth was built for the first seeds of the Victoria Regalia lily, which had been set to queue for the Amazon in 1836. Although they had been germinated and grown, they had not flowered, and in 1849, a seedling was given to Paxton to try out at Chatsworth. He entrusted it to Edward Ortiz, a young gardener, and within two months, the leaves were 4.5 feet in diameter, and a month later, it flowered. It continued growing, and it became necessary to build a much larger house. The Victoria Regia house, inspired by the water lily's huge leaves, a natural feat of engineering. He found the structure for his conservatory, which he tested by floating his daughter, Annie, on a leaf. The secret was in the rigidity and provided by the radiating ribs connecting the flexible cross ribs. Con constant exper experimentation over a number of years led him to devise the glass house design that inspired the Crystal Palace. The Great Conservatory was the test bed for the prefabricated glass and iron structure techniques, which Paxton pioneered and would employ for his masterpiece, the Crystal Palace of the Great Exhibition of 1851. These techniques made physically possible by recent technological advances in the manufacture of both glass and cast iron and financially possible by the dropping of a tax on glass. Sir Joseph Paxton of 1803 to 1865, a facsimile of the first sketch of the Great Exhibition Building about 1850, pen and ink on blotting paper, is in the Museum of Victoria and Albert Museum, London. In 1850, the Royal Commission appointed to organize the Great Exhibition were in a quandary. An international competition to design a building to house the exhibition had produced 245 designs, of which only two remotely suitable and all would take too long to build and would be too permanent. There was an outcry by the public and in Parliament against Paxson was visiting London in his capacity as a director of the Midland Railway to meet the chairman, John Ellis, who was also a member of Parliament. He happened to mention an idea he had for the hall, and Ellis promptly encouraged to produce some plans, provided that they could be ready in nine days. Unfortunately, he was committed for the next few days, but at a board meeting at the railway in Derby, it is said, he appeared to be spending much of his time doodling on a sheet of blotting paper. At the end of the meeting, he held up his first sketch of the Crystal Palace, inspired by the Victoria Regia House. The sketch is now in the Victoria and Albert Museum. He completed the plans and presented them to the commission, but there was an opposition from some members, since another design was well into its planning stage. Paxton decided to bypass the commission and publish the design in the Illustrated London News to universal acclaim. Its novelty was revolutionary, modular, prefabricated design, and the use of glass. 
Glazing was carried out from special trolleys and was fast. The man managed to fix 108 panes in a single day. The palace was 1,848 feet long, 408 feet wide, and 108 feet high. It required 4,500 tons of iron and 60,000 square feet of timber and needed over 293,000 panes of glass. Yet it took 2,000 men just eight months to build and cost 79,800 pounds. Quite unlike any other building, it was itself a demonstration of British technology in iron and in glass. In its construction, Paxton was assisted by Charles Fox, also of Derby for the iron framework, and William Cubitt, chairman of the building committee. All three were knighted after the exhibition was the was employed by the Crystal Palace Company to move it to Sydenham, where it remained until it was destroyed by fire in nineteen thirty six. It also must be noted that the Crystal Palace was built to be temporary. It was dismantled after the World's Fair, so there are no recent photos of it. 